to see you come in. Welcome, welcome to our lesson on comic studies and the comic medium as a whole. Today we're going to talk about comics, about what they are, about how they work, about how to read them. And of course, we're going to talk about Mouse, which is our reading for this week. Uh, show them this. All right. So this week, comics, Mouse, how to read it, what it means, how to analyze it, and, and what's going on with the comic medium. Uh, if you you, you know me, right? You know, you know I like comics, right? You've been in my classroom. I've got all sorts of comics. I've got comics on, on Star Wars. I've got comics on Macbeth, right? I've got comics on Thor. And of course, I've got independent graphic novels like Monstrous and Mouse, which is our reading for this week. So this lecture will hopefully introduce you to obviously what Mouse is and Art Spiegelman, who's the author of Mouse, but it will also introduce you to comics as a medium and how to analyze comics and how to, you know, say something interesting about a comic. And of course, how to read it and, and, and what comics are and what they are made up out of. So um, I'm going to get started with uh, some lecture notes. I think, I, think that, I think lecture notes are probably the best way to go about this because um, comics are a visual medium, which means it's important that you be able to see what it is I am talking about as I go along. So um, let's go with Art Spiegelman's biography first, and then we'll move into my discussion of, of how to read comics and, and, and you know how to talk about them. So um, Art Spiegelman was born in 1948, um, and he uh, is still alive. He's, uh, he's alive and kicking and, and writing and talking and trying to promote comic literacy, or in other words, um, taking comic books seriously and analyzing them as an art form, which, which of course they deserve to be uh, discussed as. Um, he was born to uh, Polish Jewish parents, which is going to be really important for a mouse, which is his sort of great masterpiece about the relationship he has with his father and about his father's experience and mother's experience in during the Holocaust, right? Um, so he immigrated to US in 1951 art and he went, he dropped out of college to pursue a career as a cartoonist. He first started writing and doing cartoons for Bubblegum. Um, but he eventually moved to San Francisco and got involved with the underground comic scene. It was pretty, pretty tight. And then um, from there, he sort of experimented and developed his own sort of style. For about 13 years, um, from the time he dropped out of college uh, in the sort of 1970s or so, um, he, until 1991, he worked on Mouse, which was his great masterpiece. During that time, he married his wife um, and interviewed his father extensively and, and created what would eventually become uh, known as, uh, as Mouse, a two-part graphic novel that explores not just the Holocaust, but also um, his own relationship with his father, who like, lived through Auschwitz and, and that whole experience there. Um, Mouse would get a Pulitzer Prize in 1992 and is recognized as one of the most important comic books ever written or graphic novels, if you want to be fancy. That term, by the way, graphic novel, is really just a term for comics that we take super seriously, right? That we view and analyze as art. Um, but I'm going to be using mostly the word comic and, and know that it is synonymous, that they are the same. <coughs> Um, the only major difference, if you want to draw a distinction, is graphic novels have a beginning, middle, and end, whereas sequential comics like Thor, for example, they never have an end. They keep on going, right? Um, okay, so uh, let's talk about um, comics as a medium, and then we'll circle back to uh, Spiegelman here in a second. So if you've never read a comic before, that, that wouldn't be that... Um, strange, right? Most people don't get exposed to comics unless they sort of seek them out themselves. Um, it's a fairly small medium. 
Um, but don't be don't be alarmed. It's very easy to pick up, um, and the barrier of entry is very low. So today I want to talk about okay, how are how do you read a comic book, and and most importantly, how do you analyze them, and say something of interest about them, which is what we're going to be focusing on all week this week. So a couple of things on this picture, if you can see my mouse. Um, <laughs> mouse puns. Uh, so in this picture, you can see one page of a comic book. And, you know, a lot of people would argue, including myself, that um, if you're going to look and analyze a, a comic, it's probably best to look at the whole composition of the page. So we're going to look at the whole page today and talk about different types of pages and how to say something of interest and value about them. So the pages, the whole, you know, the whole thing from left to right, there's two pages every time you pull up a book. Um, you're going to be reading Mouse as a PDF, unless you happen to own a copy, which I would be surprised if you did. Um, so it'll be a page by page experience. So the whole page is there. Um, if you look at panel B, you have a, a panel, which is each page of a comic book is broken up into distinct, disparate panels most of the time. Um, so you can see that this one has one over here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 and 11 panels. So um, when you are reading a comic, you are moving your eye from left to right, top to bottom. So you would start with panel one, you'd read this top um, balloon here, and then you'd move down to this next balloon, and then you'd move over to this panel, panel two, um, and then you read that one balloon there and look at the art, and then you move on to panel three, four, five, six, seven, once you were done with that whole arrangement, you would move back down to this panel, and then you move left to right here, all right? Now, the composition of the panels on the page guides you in the reading experience. You would not, for example, want to go here, then here, then here, then here. You want to start on the upper left-hand corner. Since the panel ends here at the bottom, you would move then to this panel and so on and so forth, navigating your way down. So it's something that is very intuitive um, once you start getting the hang of it. But if you think of a comic book as a Z, um, you want to start at the top left-hand corner and then work your way down. So panel to panel. Um, now, other things that are important to pay attention to are frames, which is the uh, what surrounds the panel. Um, you want to pay attention to speech bubbles, which are the sort of bubble text that uh, show what the what the person, the people, the characters in the comic are saying. And of course, you also want to pay attention to gutters, which is the space in between the panels. We call those the gutters of the page. And you can see that very nicely arranged here um, in between these panels, right? So the gutters is the space in between. The frame is what surrounds each panel. The speech bubble bubbles, bubbles are the um, language that is sort of encapsulated in usually a circular bubble that the characters are speaking um, panels, and then this is all arranged on a page, all right? Any of these can be taken apart and analyzed when you are looking at a comic, but I think what's most important, at least initially, and especially if you've never read a comic before, is that you sort of go with the flow and just get used to reading them and understanding how they work and what's going on with them. So. Um, Let's look at one page from Mouse. This is about 10 pages in, very early on in the um, novel. Uh, pages in a graphic novel or a comic fly by really fast. Um, so this week we're going to be talking about one comic. Um, and it's, it's lengthy, but it, it reads really quickly. And we'll break it up over the course of the week. So um, if you see here, this is a fairly easy and traditional comic to read. It's, it's not super... Uh, excess, you know, complex, right, or experimental. Um, so we would start up here in the upper left-hand corner. Um, you see that this speech bubble is in a box, which means that it's a bit of narration. Um, most of the time, if you see things in a square box, usually above or below the page, um, it is narration by the author or the narrator of the novel, just like you would have a narrator um, in the work by Edgar Allan Poe or any of these other uh, artists. Um, so in, in comics, it's usually arranged in a box. Then we have our little speech bubble here. Come, we'll talk while I pedal. We move on over here to the next panel, panel two, where we see more conversation between art. Remember, this is an autobiographical um, comic. So Art Spiegelman is in the book. He's this mouse over here. And then this is his father, right, Vladek. And Vladek is getting on an exercise bike, and they're talking about the book 
that Art is going to create, the autobiography of himself and his relationship with his dad. Um, so they talk a little bit here. Then we move down to panel three, which is on the second row of panels. Um, then panel four, five, six, seven, and eight. We, need, we have a nice, cool, unique circular panel here at the bottom with a little bit more um, narration. Here now at the bottom of the page, um, Vladek takes over the narrator's role, um, not art. So over, over here, we have uh, art narrating, but now as we move into the past and we start talking about the events that led up to uh, Vladek's capture and imprisonment within Auschwitz, um, we have Vladek taking over the narration. Very, very cool page. Um, we'll talk more about that in a second. So when you are looking at a comic page, um, you want to look at all of the different elements, the art, the, the dialogue, uh, what's going on, how they all sort of come together to tell a cohesive story. Um, sometimes a whole page will be one single panel, and that is called a splash page. And we see a great example of that here, right? Um, this is a splash page from a really famous issue of Amazing Spider-Man. Um, and this is the Spider-Man No More splash page, right? So here we see Peter Parker, our protagonist, has thrown away the spider costume. We see that nice juxtaposition here between um, Spider-Man, who has his back turned, and uh, this sort of abandoned trash of the Spider-Man costume, right? Um, splash pages are really splashy, ha <laughs> um, But they draw your attention, right? They say that this is really important, and they want you to really think about and fixate on this from more than you normally would if it was just one panel in a larger array of panels. You also get much more detail, which you can see here as well. This is a modern, um, independently drawn comic. Um, I think it's Alex plus Ada. And so here we see a simple page with just three panels um, and some really stark things going on here. One, note that the gutters here are all black, which is really stark and uh, foreboding. Note that the top panel is stretched across the entire width of the page and the last two panels as she sort of comes to grips with her own domestic violence here um, are really stark and really uh, intense. This one where she sort of sees her own blood is really intense and then we see a sort of hyper zoomed in version of, of the violence that just sort of came out of nowhere and cut us off guard, right? Um, so here we see the arrangement of the panels doing a lot of the storytelling work here and carrying a lot of the dramatic weight of the, of the text. A good comic writer uses um, comic panel composition on the page to tell the story, right? It's not just the dialogue and not just the art, but how the art is translated and conveyed on the page, if that makes sense. Um, here we see a great uh, page layout from a, I think this is from Uncanny X-Men. Um, and here we see the panel sort of broken out across time and space. We have three distinct panels, but in, the, in each of the panels, we have panels within panels, which is kind of fun. Um, and this is about a uh, time traveler, she's sort of gets a handle on her powers and sort of learns to control time and space, choose to control and choose to control it and you will choose to, choose to, right? Really good um, sparse dialogue, letting the text and the panel arrangement do a lot of the work on the page, which, which is neat. Um, here we see another um, sort of unconventional um, panel. This is from an adaptation of the Odyssey. Um, Homer's great epic. Um, this is a wonderful comic adaptation where they swap all the genders, do all sorts of weird stuff. Um, you can see things move, are very strange and unusual here. Um, you see that there are very, very minimal gutters. Note that the gutters are these sort of short, really, really tiny lines in between the panels. We have our first panel here, which is this whole thing. And then we have panel two, three, four, and five. I would read this, if I were reading this, I would start here and finish all of these lines of dialogue. I would move up to here and then here, and then I'd wrap things up by reading these last two panels there at the bottom. And the art should sort of tell that story here. Um, in Mouse, you're not gonna see anything as wildly expressionistic and unusual as a panel like this, but I did wanna sort of show you 
how sort of diverse panel arrangement can be. Um, also, mouse is in black and white, so there's a lot less going on with colors. Um, it's a lot more straightforward, which is, I think, appropriate and nice. So if we go back to where we started, right, if we go back to this initial um, page of, of mouse, you might notice things now that maybe you didn't know before about composition, right? Because it's not just about going panel to panel, although you could. And with looking at various panels, you might notice things like arts fixation on this drawing. We learn later this is a um, a picture of Anja, which is his mother, his mother who committed suicide after she escaped Auschwitz later on in her life, um, just due to the trauma of the experience. So she's sort of haunting the page here. She's on the fringes, right? We see here in this beautiful panel that art is sort of framed or trapped by the weight of his father's past, right? A past that is inscribed on his arm over here. We see the, 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 the letter, the numbers of his sort of prisoner tattoo that he got in Auschwitz. Note also that the picture of Anja is still in the frame. But you can do an analysis of uh, comics like this, right, going panel to panel, or you can do an analysis of comics looking at the whole page layout, right? Note that um, Vladek, who is Art's dad, is pictured here, a sort of close up on his face, but note that this also kind of connects to Art's dad here, here, and here to create a, a sort of exercise bike in the composition itself. A really impressive visual um, symbol that sort of comes out here on the page. There's lots of little uh, tastes like that throughout, throughout maps, and I hope you pay attention to them as you go along. So um, that is your quick, introduction to the world of comic books and in particular to Art Spiegelman who we're going to be spending our entire week with. Um, we're going to be doing some work analyzing and discussing uh, Mouse which is his great masterpiece. Um, we're going to be doing some close reading of various panels and sections from the page and seeing what other people have said and come up with um, as they've looked at this incredibly powerful Pulitzer Prize winning uh, novel. A novel that just, ha just so happens to be told in the sort of comic medium. I hope that you found this useful, and I look forward to seeing what you uh, write about in your responses. And